What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am exploring a frequently talked about topic within the PC DIY community that has still managed to amass two very opposing sides of an argument. And that is which way should you mount your tower style air CPU cooler in your system? Whether it be horizontal with the, and by that I mean a horizontal airflow path with the fan blowing air at the back of your case and exhausting it out the rear or a vertical airflow path with the fan exhausting it out the top of your chassis. The idea to test this comes from user Eggs Are To Be Crushed who left a comment on my recent radiator placement video which you should watch if you haven't already. So thank you very much Eggs. Um, if you guys happen to have a suggestion yourselves on what I should test in the future, please send me an email to the address right here. I've made it just for you and with the subject line, test this in all caps with a bunch of exclamation marks just because they're fun. Uh, don't leave a comment if you have a suggestion just because it's a little bit more difficult for me to sift through that. But moving out of the topic at hand, um, it is going to vary. The results that we're getting here today is going to vary uh, based on the hardware we're using. So allow me to introduce the parts that we'll be using for this rig, starting with the Core i7-7700K from Intel, which is their flagship chip under their Kaby Lake family. And this is gonna be running at stock speeds today, but that's not really to say it's gonna be slow by any means because it starts with a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz out of the box and turbos to 4.5. Pushing it any further would probably overheat uh, due to the cooler that we're using, which is the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master. It's a very popular, very reputable, cooler, but it's more on the budget side, and I didn't want to push it too hard. I think 4.6 gigahertz on the CPU is going to be plenty to put a load on it and really test it and put it through its paces, but it is a more entry-level economical cooler that still does have a decent amount of thermal dissipation performance to it. It's a great bang for the buck option. It's incredibly popular and well-known within the community, which is why we're using it today. We're also gonna be using the Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon from MSI as our motherboard of choice, along with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. Windows 10 and the rest of our applications will be loaded up onto a 250 gig SanDisk Ultra 2 SSD. And we've also got a Newton 600 watt power supply from Fractal Design. As far as our graphics card goes, I'm gonna be taking a similar approach to the radiator video and testing two different types of video card GPU shrouds, uh, including the Founders Edition GTX 1070, which is an enclosed blower style card, which will be ejecting hot air out the back of the case exclusively, as well as the Zotac Amp Edition GTX 1070, which is a more standard add and board partner card with an aftermarket cooler, custom PCB, and it will be ejecting and circulating hot air within the chassis, uh, which could potentially warm up our components. So testing both of those with each of our CPU cooler orientations will give us a bigger, clearer picture of what's going on overall. And finally, we have the Define S Mid Tower case from Fractal Design. This is a case that I really like to go to for these types of tests because it has plenty of mounting options for fans and radiators at the top and front and so forth. Uh, the actual chassis fans we're gonna be using is pretty extensive here. We've got three 120 millimeter fans as uh, intakes at the front of the chassis. Those are gonna be NZXT case fans that I've pulled off of the S340 and the Manta, I believe. We've also got a 140 at the back from Fractal. Uh, Fractal Design, this is one of their Venturi fans, again, a 140. And finally, we have a second 140 mm millimeter exhaust fan at the top from Be Quiet. This is one of their Pure Wings 2 fans. We've got a smorgasbord of fans going on here, but I really wanted to stack the case full of fans so that we are not bottlenecked by case airflow in any way for this test. That way we're, we're good to go. We've got plenty of positive air pressure going in the case, and that way we can just focus exactly on uh, how the CPU temperatures themselves are affected by the CPU cooler orientation. So on that note, let's go ahead and finish up the test that I've already got running in the background here. We're gonna be doing a half hour run of Unigen Heaven 4.0 for each of our four tests. And those four tests, again, are going to be each of the orientations for the, for the CPU cooler and the two different types of GPU shrouds. So I'm gonna run those. We're gonna circle back again, as always, and compare and contrast the results and draw some closing words and conclusions. Sound good? Sounds good, I'm excited. I think, I think my wife just brought home cinnamon rolls, so I will be right back. Mm. Oh God, oh my God. Mm. <clears throat> All right guys, I have the results here and it's it's going it's driving me insane right now. I, I don't know what to make of it all. Uh, some of the numbers make sense and others are just way opposite of what I was anticipating. So maybe you guys can help me out here. The first test I ran was the horizontal path of airflow with the CPU cooler blowing hot air towards the back of the case and injecting it out that way and a enclosed blower style card, the Founders Edition GTX 1070. And we found 62 degrees Celsius on the CPU package with that configuration. But when we switched the, the, the enclosed blower style card with the open air shroud, we actually dropped four degrees Celsius on the CPU, which is 
Weird. I would have expected the opposite, where if we're starting to circulate more hot air in the chassis, it's going to warm up the CPU because that's where the, the, the heatsink fan isn't taking all of its air from. So I don't know how to really explain that, guys. I mean, I guess maybe this video needs a part two or something or, or something went awry or maybe it's the answer staring me straight in the face and I just can't see it. So let me know in the comments if you have an idea or a theory on why that might be the case. The other pair of tests that we ran featured the CPU cooler mounted in a horizontal path position where the airflow is traveling upwards and outside the top of the case with the CPU heatsink fan actually parallel with the graphics card PCB and actually underneath the heatsink as opposed to on top of it, pushing air upwards through the thin array. And what we saw with the closed blower style card was 57 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And uh, we went up five degrees Celsius when swapping to an open air shroud graphics card like the Zotac Amp Edition. So that, this makes sense. It makes sense that if you have more hot air circulating in the case, wafting off of your GPU, that your CPU temps would be affected negatively. So I'm perfectly fine with that. That makes sense. You know, my brain's like, yes, okay. But the first two tests, the results there does not compute. Did I do something wrong? Is there a theory that I'm not seeing that maybe you guys can, but if these results are accurate and there is no, you know, margin of error or user error, then at the end of the day, we're still only seeing a five degree Celsius variance between our coolest and our hottest results on the CPU. Uh, 57 being the low and 62 being the high. Definitely not nearly as alarming or as concerning as the temperature uh, variance we were seeing with the radiator placement test from last week. And to be honest, guys, I really wish that I could have given you a definitive winner for today's testing and been like, clearly this configuration and this setup is superior in every way, shape or form under these circumstances and, you know, case closed and all that jazz. But I, I simply can't. And I'm not going to skew the data here just to get a favorable ending that's more dramatic or whatever. Um, so that's the best I got for you for now. Again, love to hear your, your thoughts on this in the comments below. But that's all I got, guys. So be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff. More tests like this will be coming soon in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Have a good one, guys. I love you all. Be safe. Be kind to each other. And until next time, I'll see y'all in the next video.